Hey everybody, welcome back to Goodell Farm. I'm Peter. Today's video is about stone walls. I have a stone wall that I'm looking to extend. I got extra stone that's been laying around, it's something worthwhile to do. Good exercise for sure. Uh, you know, the history of stone walls back in the early settler days, maybe even still today, when a farmer was cultivating their field and tilling it, they would just come upon all type of stone. So to haul that stone over to the border and create a boundary for their property or even a boundary for their livestock. So today, if you're out and about, definitely in New England, um, and you see stone walls, chances are that stone wall was an old time boundary to a field, a property line. Sometimes the farmers used stone walls as a pen for uh, their livestock also. So if you see like a small square of stone walls, that could have been a, a pen for uh, the pigs or the goats or what have you. So a little bit of uh, interesting history. I'm always amazed when I see these huge stone walls with huge boulders. And I just think back, how the heck did they move that stone? I know they did it with horses and mules and ropes, etc., but it's still hard work. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy today's video. We'll see you out there. So a few years ago, I was just cleaning up my boundary area and pulled out a bunch of this field stone, put it on pallets. Uh, and it's been here for a while. I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, like six or seven pallets. <clears throat> um, I don't have it stacked up too high because there's only so much weight my tractor can handle. So um, I'll pull these pallets out, bring them over to where I need to extend the wall and go from there. What we have, I tried to pull out the bigger rocks. Um, you can see just from, from a size standpoint, this one, you know, th th these are heavy. If, if you ever dealt with rock, you know what I'm talking about. If not, a boulder like this big you, you would look at that and it's a little bit bigger than a bowling ball that sucker's got to be 50 60 pounds and when you're hauling these time and time again it's a heck of a job so I'm going to take this job and do it in bite-sized pieces probably take me a couple days you know here I have some nice really big stone It'll be good good to use that it'll also be good just to clear up this area because um, <clears throat> not that it's an eyesore I mean but anyway let's uh, get going on the stone wall and uh, go from there now if you're considering doing a stone wall a couple tips the best practice is to level the ground that the wall will be on and then lay down a base of either stone dust like this here or gravel. Uh, what that does, it provides a nice bed for the stone to go in and you could shimmy the stone the way you want it. And then also if the ground heaves because of frost, this gravel will provide a little bit of uh, wiggle room if you will so the wall will be more sturdy now you know they didn't do that back in the day when they built um, the stone walls I mean they were just lucky to get them off of the field and pile them up um, so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the easy not the easy way but <laughs> I'm not gonna deal with the gravel uh, I'll flatten the land a little bit but um, I'm not going too high with this wall so I'll spare the gravel at this point.
Okay, day one, made a pretty good dent in the stone wall. Um, from a progress standpoint, I did from this end all the way to where the rake, the yellow rake is. So the uh, starting spot was there and lugged these in place. Um, I still got another probably 10 or 15 foot to do. I got what's here and then I have some rock in the in the pasture on pallets that I need to bring forward. All right, that's what I got so far. Building a stone wall is somewhat like a jigsaw puzzle. It's not too complicated. It's really just bulwark to haul the stones into place. Some things that you do want to consider doing, and I tried to do this, is you start off with a pretty solid level base. And if you have big rocks to put on the bottom, that's good as well. Once you have that all set, you start layering the stone on top. And if you can, go from big up to small. But I like to keep big ones for the cap as well. It just is a nicer look. Uh, where you can, you want to stagger a joint. Because when you stagger a joint, it makes for a more solid wall. And when you stagger joints, not only left to right, but also front to back, where you can, it's not always possible. Don't overcomplicate it, don't overthink it. Just start stacking the stone and where you can do a cross hatching type pattern to provide some stability. An option to consider for aesthetics is if you have like a big boulder, like this one here, you can put it in and it in effect serves the multiple layers and just visually when you look at a wall, you can see like, like that one over there, big boulder, big boulder. And then, so it kind of breaks it up a little bit. You may like it, you may not like it. It's your own personal preference. Um, and when you're doing the wall, one thing you'll need a lot of, I call them shins. So these little rocks that go in between the big rocks. I mean, rocks are not a perfect size or shape. So to get it as level as possible, you wanna use those shins to not only make it stable, but try to get it in the right position from a, a leveling standpoint. Here's something I did on an earlier extension. On an earlier extension, is I put a, uh, an end stone at the end of the wall, um, just you know for visual purposes, but then also provides a little stability. That's buried down probably eight inches or so in the soil. On this side, I don't have an end stone, but I got some pretty beefy uh, boulders here. Um, it also helps, I guess, if, if someone backs into it, the less likely it's going to disturb the wall that much. It will disturb the vehicle more. All right, it's the start of day two. And this is an example where when you have a project to do, oftentimes there's two or three projects you have to do before you do the actual project. And I'll show you a little bit about that today. Um, I did realize overnight that I need to wear the gloves today. You know, when you're working with stone and heavy rock, gravel and dirt, your just hands are in there. It's like sandpaper grading on them. So, you know, my hands are a little bit beat up yesterday. So I'll take care of them today. Um, so l let me show you the uh, pre-projects before I get back into the stone wall. Here are a couple of the pallets of the rock that I have remaining, and I have to break this down. I think this pallet's too heavy for the forks on my tractor. Same thing with this one here. So I got extra pallets. I'll unload some of those, but over here, um, I got this pre-project. So I got 
fence posts on top of pallets of brick that are on top of the pallets of stone. So let me start moving all this around so I can get to the stone. So clearing away the fence post came up upon some treasures my daughter dug up in metal detecting. You can see a variety of horseshoes, some other cast iron, a piece of something here. Not sure, but uh, those into uh, metal detecting and treasure hunting, it's pretty cool when you find stuff like that. All right, let's move on. Okay, I got um, all the rocks spread out somewhat evenly on the pallets. Some may be heavier than others. Um, the next step is to take these, bring them out to the work site, and start laying them down. Okay, I'm gonna start with these four pallets here. You don't realize, that's a lot of rock. I gotta lift every one of those things, holy smokes. Um, and on top of that, I still got the leftovers from yesterday. So I think what I'm gonna do is lay the first course. And you know, when you're, when you're doing this, when you, you never wanna go too far out that way before you go up this way. So it's almost like a stair step. You wanna, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Um, the other thing too is when you spread out all the rock, it's actually helpful because then you can eyeball. Let's say you need a, a piece that is just about this size right here. Well, if that was stacked on top of everything, you wouldn't be able to see it. So uh, I should have enough here to keep me busy for a couple hours before my energy gets zapped and I'm dead. So let me uh, get to going on this and pick you back up when I made some progress. All right, I'm at the home stretch of the wall. Let me uh, turn this around and show you what I got going on. All right, I got this one, two, three pallets of rock. That's what's remaining and the incidental items there so so far it's come along pretty good i think yesterday i ended probably just to the right of where that red rock is i think i i think i started today somewhere around here and some of these rocks were pretty heavy and brought it this way so i'm going to finish this last bit piece up and show you the final job when I'm done. All right, we're done. So here at the end, got a uh, nice <laughs> topper end cap. Comes all the way down. There's still some finishing parts that I'm gonna do with filler rock all the way down this way. And back where we started with this rock right here. So, uh, I think it came out pretty well. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.